Welcome to episode 443 of the Clive Barker Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to the imagination of Clive Barker. I was going to take a vacation, but this news popped up and it couldn't wait two weeks. So we hopped on Zoom and made a mostly unedited news episode. In this episode, we discuss Clive's recent announcement with Bloody Disgusting, as well as Nightbreed and Peter Atkins updates. Also, do you remember the Poe Project? This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art, but Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over the Etsy shop to buy one of his original paintings or books. Follow the link in the show notes or click the side banner, and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. Just a couple of days ago, the Nibbler was revealed on Facebook, which is not in the Etsy shop. Uh, There are also some new paintings on his Etsy shop to check out, uh, Mother and Child 2, The Stargazer, The Folk Singer, The Pearl, Top of the World, and don't forget about uh, his books, The Chimney Sweep's Tale and Celebrate Imagination. Well, welcome. This is episode 443, and we're doing a news episode, so uh, good afternoon to say. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? I know uh, you're uh, you're not exactly in Alaska right now, are you? I am exactly in Alaska right now. <laughs> Not in Fairbanks, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Seward, Alaska, though. And so I'm out of town. I'm not at home. And so I just have my, I happen to have my laptop here. I brought it so I could play Baldur's Gate. But of course, as soon as I tro- try to get away and we're going to take two weeks off from the podcast, Clyde Barker does this massive interview with a bunch of news. And of course, as soon as we make the decision that we're not going to go to his uh, his his uh, appearance, you know the news relates to that too. But we'll we'll yeah. get to that. Um, yeah, the news so, never take a vacation. I know. Yeah, and and of course the last news episode we did was about how there was no news, and now of course you know then we go on to take a vacation and there's massive news. Um. So that's that's our big one. But the the, the first thing though, um, the the first one I want to mention is uh, Moon Town by Pete Atkins, which I happen to bring with me so that I can read. Is it this is showing backwards, isn't it? No, it's showing the right way. Okay, it's showing backwards on my my thing. But yeah, yeah Moon Town by Pete Atkins. He just announced, I think, last night on Facebook, maybe or maybe the day before, uh, that it just got put on audiobook by Encyclopocalypse. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm excited about that. I just put it on my Audible, uh, so I'm and I started listening to it um, last night and this morning. So now I'm following along in my book that I brought along. Very nice. And so that's cool. Excited about that, and congratulations on that. That's a that's a great book, and uh, I'm starting it over again because I now I want to listen to it, um, as a, and follow along in the book. You know, yeah, I just keep moving a, my bookmark. It's a novel from 2008, and uh, he he put it out in 2008, and it was brought to audiobook life by the fabulous Carrie Coelho Voice. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, you can get it from Audible. I think it's 1746 as a standalone, 16 quid in the UK, according to Peter Atkins. Um, and you can still find the hardcover and ebook editions from. Earthling publications and cemetery dance publications, respectively. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that was great news. I've actually been kind of waiting for that. Um, I've been reading this kind of slowly over a couple of years, and so I've been sort of forgetting what was going on with it. So now I'm happy yeah. to start it over again with the audio book. Well, for and those that's that... mainly because yeah. of the podcast that I have uh, that I I haven't finished so now i need now i'm starting it over again from the beginning yeah nothing better than start a new book or or starting a book while you're on vacation um for those of you who don't know what moontown is about here's a synopsis from earthling um publications it says uh, shelly campbell only meant to help people 
Recruited by her professor into working with a group study program investigating phobias, Shelley has been using her ability as an empath to enter the minds of troubled patients. Within the dreamscape of their memories, Shelley uncovers their repressed childhood fears in order to help heal them. But some fears are buried for a reason. Now more than lost dreams are resurfacing. Something else is waking up too, something dark and long forgotten, something hungry for the taste of our terror. Shelley Campbell has gone too deep, has found the place where the darkness waits, a place ruled by the moon, a place where midnight lives, a place where every, every night is Halloween, a place called Moontown. So another great um, piece of literary fiction by Peter Atkins. Yeah. So check that out if you haven't already. Uh, Pete Atkins has been a, a, a great um, friend to the podcast, and we're excited for that one. And it's and always then, great uh, to see Encyclopocalypse put more stuff out. Yeah, and and you had uh, and you had just uh, found this, um, although it's kind of an older update, right? A, a little bit of an update on the Nightbreed Extended soundtrack. Yeah, so someone on Occupy Midian, and the name escapes me now, sorry about that, but someone posted about um that there might that there might be some news about um the two C D Nightbreed release by Entrada Records. Um uh, and uh it's not really much of a, an update. It's it's just that uh apparently in the forums, in the John Williams forums and in the Entrada forums, um and on Facebook, someone was quoting um, uh, Roger Feigelson, who's part of Entrada. He's uh, he's the business development guy at Roger uh, at at Entrada, and um, he's responsible for new projects, establishing and maintaining relationships with licensors, negotiating contracts, and locating master elements. And so, what happened there was that uh, in one of the forums, someone asked him, "Hey, what's going on with the Nightbreed uh, soundtrack?" And he gave kind of like a a veiled explanation of why it's taking longer. He said something like, um, um, "He said uh, someone asked uh, Roger Feigelson, any word on Entrada's expanded release?" And this was back in January um, of 2024, and uh, and then. Someone said, yes, yes, go ahead and explain it to them for the hundredth time. And Roger Feigelson said, it's like I'm standing under a cloud and it's raining chocolate chips. And I think to myself, hey, what a great day to make chocolate chip cookies. But then I notice I don't have eggs in the fridge. How can I make chocolate chip cookies without eggs? So my wife offers to go to the supermarket, but then I get a call as she is in the egg aisle and says they're out of eggs. So I'm thinking again, how am I going to make these cookies without eggs? Maybe a different supermarket. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this and just get an umbrella and ignore the chocolate chips. I do enjoy a good chocolate chip cookie though. I'm sorry. What was the question again? So. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty convoluted extended metaphor. Yeah, but so basically what the other people uh, have been arguing is that what he's saying is that this probably means that even though the chocolate chips are raining, he doesn't have eggs, which means that probably they're waiting on some sort of licensing or some sort of paperwork that needs to be taken care of. Um, but yeah, I yeah. think they're still working on that. I think didn't the original news break from a guy that was working on the liner notes? on the on this um like a year ago or so and he, he had mentioned it on a podcast i think it's it's possible i that's what i remember i thought back. i had heard about it on on mad monster on monster party podcast yeah. i think it was yeah yeah but uh i'm sure that would be somewhere in the episode where we broke the news about that yeah yeah but um, well, I hope that happens. We got a really nice double disc version of Candyman, right? And uh, Lord of Illusions mm -hmm. happened. Yep. You know, I'd, I'd also like to see a Hellraiser 1 and 2 double disc uh, version. That would be nice, too. Yeah. Do you have the, you don't have that uh, edition of the soundtracks for 1, 2, and 3 all in the same digipack? It's a really no, nice I guess release. I, I guess I never did get that one. Yeah, That would be good cool. to have. Yeah, yeah, I should get that should i think you can still find it on ebay or something yeah i i had i have the one by itself and the two the hellraiser 2 that has high point on it 
Oh yeah, that's right. High Point, which is also a Christopher Young soundtrack. Which is um, not which is like a western or something, right? I think it's an adventure film or something like that, some sort yeah. of thriller. Um but I'm looking forward to that because even though we got a decent soundtrack in CD and vinyl for Nightbreed, having an expanded score just like the one that came out for Lord of Illusions with some maybe demos or maybe early versions of stuff or maybe, you know, uh, early suites of some of the themes. That would be an interesting thing to have to see how the music was composed and how it evolved. So uh, I'm always fascinated by that stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess it our, does involve some work to uh, put all the cues together and find out how they all get together and license everything. Yeah, it, it would be nice to see a big, I think, a big extended version because the original, I think it only had like a single, a single like sheet, a little mm -hmm. leaflet thing inside of the soundtrack. It wasn't a booklet at all. Yeah, it'd be great to have more liner notes. Yeah. So our main news uh, and the big one, which is it, it, the the news has big implications, but the story itself was really it's short. short. Yeah, which was disappointing. I mean, I think honestly, I would love to have seen this as a revelatory interview with Phil and Sarah Stokes instead of sure. instead of I don't know how this came to bloody disgusting and why it was such a short interview. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of an announcement, really. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, um, I don't know, I guess it's, this is not the format I would have liked to have seen this news come out. I'd rather well, have seen it as a revelatory interview personally. Sure. Which one thing doesn't dismiss the other. I mean, it's possible that another revelatory interview might be coming where he's going to expound on this. Um, that would be, yeah, that's a good point. You're right. Maybe that's what's going to happen. And maybe, maybe we'll, Maybe we'll we will get that expounded on, but you know, yeah. as a but let's get into the meat and potatoes of what the yes. article says. As from Bloody Disgusting, they announced Clive Barker making final convention appearances to focus entirely on writing, and it says, yeah. um, "Here's what's coming," and that's an exclusive from Bloody Disgusting, and they basically said, um, "This is Clive's message." Okay, so uh, do you want me to read it? I guess it's short enough, yeah. Yeah. It says, my dear friends, for the last almost 40 years, I've been visiting conventions in cities in Europe and America to talk with my supporters, signing books, movie posters, Pinhead, a.k.a. the Hell Priest models, and countless precious keepsakes which you've brought for me to sign. The most precious? The arms, legs, and other body parts that brave souls have asked me to sign to later be tattooed over. What an honor. However... It's time to focus entirely on writing. I'm not stopping public events because I've lost delight in meeting you all over the years. I'm as passionate as ever about sharing my imagination with readers and moviegoers around the world. In the very room where I'm writing these words, I have the manuscripts for a very large number of projects, 31 of them, some very close to completion, others still telling themselves. There are some wild projects in this collection of works, whether close to finished or done. There are also stories that you all knew I would be finishing. Abrat 4 and 5 are amongst the books at my feet. So is the third and final book of the art and the sequel to The Thief of Always. There are also return visits to characters and mythologies you may have thought I would never return to. I hope I am still able to surprise you in the decades ahead. So, um, and if you don't see me at conventions, you'll keep seeing new Clive Barker books being published, as well as some movie and television adaptations. I feel strangely emotional writing these words, but I've got an enormous amount of work to do. So if you've noticed I'm less public than I've been over the last 40 years, please know I'll be there in every new book I publish, painting I exhibit, or film I produce. My love to you. Hope to see you all again next year. Clive. So, yeah, looks like um, these last convention appearances will uh, start at the Days of the Dead Chicago this year. Yeah. And, then, and, um, and, and that was mm -hmm. something kind of important to to point out because some people took that to mean that Days of the Dead was the last convention. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the, the, it's a little bit fuzzy on that, but I think the, the main takeaway was it was the beginning of the last conventions. So they don't want to say 100% for sure that's the last one, right. uh, but it's definitely winding down. I think that yeah. was the takeaway from that. 
Yeah, so Chris Rowe Management says this will give fans and admirers one last chance to meet Clive at a convention and get their memorabilia signed. So they've announced that Days of the Dead Chicago this year takes place March 22 through the 24th, 2024. We have yeah. some friends who will probably go there and take lots of pictures. So and we and we thought hard, long and hard about going there and then decided, you know, for monetary reasons and we haven't done a we haven't hadn't done a fundraiser in a few years and we just decided, you know what, no, I, we just we just couldn't manage that. And yeah. for me, it comes at a time in my work that's really difficult and we just right. didn't didn't do it. And and, um, a, and and this is a time for me and my wife where um yeah, she's currently searching for a different job. So uh we are kind of putting some expenses in the back burner for now. Uh, yeah. But things are moving along, so no worries there. Uh, but however, for March, for this month, I don't think I'll be going either. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. But but that was another interesting point. So it's a little contradictory because they say it'll it's the beginning of the final appearances, but then Chris Rowe Management says it'll give you one last chance. So that's that almost sounds like it's the last one, him saying that. Yeah, I would probably so say I can that see why people are confused. Yeah, I would probably say that probably the only conventions he's going to, the last conventions he's going to do is going to be this year. That's what I got out of this. So, oh. and the final convention appearances from Clyde Barker will begin at Days of the Dead Chicago this year. So, yeah, for now, I mean, hmm. do we have any other ones planned out? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, um... I don't think so. There might be in a few other things. Um, we'd have to check that. But yeah, it looks like it, it, this is it, guys. If you want to get something signed by Clive, 2024 is going to be probably the last year in a long while that you will have a chance to do that. So I would yeah. I would say if this is what you want to do, if you want to meet Clive, one, mm -hmm. you know, you never had a chance to meet him or you want to get something signed, I would probably advise you to go to Days of the Dead in Chicago in, this month. Because it might be one of the last conventions that Clive's going to do, at least for a while. Yeah. And and so I guess then let's kind of unpack, because he said these really quickly, but the, the projects that he said he was working on. First of all, 31 things in the works. <laughs> we, you know, that's a lot. And um, we don't know about most of those. Uh, Aberat four and five, obviously, we've heard about for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, book three of the art we knew about. Uh, but the sequel to The Thief of Always, I don't think I'd ever heard anything about that. Had you ever heard of him working on anything, a sequel to The Thief of Always? I think I think he had mentioned that briefly here and there. But um, but there was something that caught me by surprise, because I don't think they were talking about that in the last uh, interview, did they? I don't and I'm not sure what uh, so. sequel for Thief of Always would actually entail, right? I mean, uh, I don't know either. I mean, yeah, uh, hard grown up Harvey. I don't know. I guess revisiting we'll find out. The, the revisiting the side of you know where Mister Hood had maybe died. a different maybe a different child, maybe a different thief. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, idea, but uh, I thought the book started yeah. and ended pretty well, and and you know I was very happy yeah. with it. Um, I didn't think I need to go back to that story, but if anybody can make a sequel for it, Clive can, you know, it's, yeah. it, it could be, um, I, I'm, I don't want to start speculating things about the, the, the sequel for thief, because I really don't know anything about it, but, um, right. It could be like how Frank had, had, had sort of a foothold in the world, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Mr. Hood also has a, has a little remnant of himself in the world somehow it's possible i mean we never really got a, a a clear idea of where mr hood and his demons came from yeah but i also feel like if you start explaining the monsters too much then it takes away some of their power so yeah i don't know but i'm interested in uh the book of the art three which uh if you recall Clive Barker said uh, some years ago, back in 2013, uh, Clive Barker said, uh, posted on Facebook, he said, the third book of the art takes place in Quiddity, the Dream Sea, 
What the art has been doing is moving toward a massive metaphysical resolution in another world. I have been planning that for many years, and I have 500, maybe 600 pages of notes towards that novel. A week doesn't go by without my contributing something to that, so it's not as though I pick up the thing a few years on without having done anything in the interim. I keep a running tab on how I feel about the various material and whether I've got it to the critical mass that I need it to get to before I write it. So he posted that in September of 2013 on Facebook. And um, if you remember, there was also that one time when uh, before that, I think uh, um, Rob even made an article about that, um, saying that uh, Clyde Barker has figured out the ending for Abra uh, for uh, the R3. Yeah. Remember? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was back in like 2012 or 2011, if I recall correctly. And so the, book, hmm. the books of the art are tricky because every one of them takes place in, in present day. And, uh, you know, and when there's a large gap in between one book and the next, or if it takes a long time from start to finish of a book, it's like, well, what is present day? That kind of makes me wonder, you know, what, what present day is going to be in that, in that book, if he's been writing it over the course of 20 years or 10 years. Right. We'll see. We'll yeah. see how that goes. I mean, it hasn't really been that much present time. I mean, the beginning of the first one takes place way back when the girls go to bathe in that lake in Paloma Grove. And then the Everville goes back to the days of the frontier, right? When uh... Yeah, but, but most of that is just backstory. Yeah, it's backstory. That's true. Yeah, I mean, but most, most of the Great and Secret show is in, is in like 1988 and uh or 89 right 1989 mm -hmm. and most of everville is 1994 i think it's easy to update that um also it probably takes place yeah i guess that's interesting we'll we'll find out what uh, what happened to you know the i i mean at this point i'm wondering what characters are going to be in that last book of the art or if it's mm -hmm. going to be more monumental and introduce many more new characters. Because Fletcher's gone. The Jaff is gone. Harry um, Demore is blind. Well, true. But I, I think, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder if it's going to be before all that stuff happens in the Scarlet Gospels. It's, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of a futile exercise in finding out when is it going to take place. But I guess we'll find out when it comes out. Um. Yeah, because there's a lot of characters from the first and second book that have completely resolved their um, stories. So, but if he's going to bring this to Quiddity, then it's going to be a little more Aberathian like in story, I guess, because we're going to be seeing the Ephemeris, we're going to be seeing the Dream Sea. Um, it's just Clive can't get away from his Liverpool roots, right? Of living close to the ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, that's two of them. And he mentioned another one, right? So he mentioned, uh, what's the other project? Uh, Aberat five and, uh, four, four and, five. and five. Yeah. Yep. Aberat four and five. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's the least surprising out of everything. Really. We've seen, we've seen a lot of boxes and, and, and file boxes and dossiers when we visited Clive's, uh, Seraphim studios. Back in 2013, was it 2013? 2014. 20, 14, that's right. Yeah. And there were a lot of projects there that I never posted the pictures I took of those shelves, or I, I didn't post yeah. a lot of those pictures because I wasn't sure if some of those projects are okay to talk about. Yeah. Um, but I was looking at those. I believe that he has 30 projects. I mean, there's a lot of projects that I saw with different titles. Some of them are old projects like American Primitive that never happened, remember? Like oh, if yeah. you go to Revelations, you can find out that he was going to make American Primitive, which was going to be kind of this anthology stories or whatever. Yeah, all these uh, all these black binders, you know, up on a shelf. But one of the things that I remember seeing was uh, a dossier marked the Poe Project. Uh, I think you remember that as well. Yeah. And it's always kind of been there in the back of my mind. Every time I looked at the pictures of those shelves, I was like, what's the Poe project? I don't know what, what this is. And then I, this week I decided to Google that 
and find out what was this Clive Barker Poe project. And so I found out that back in 2006, um, Barker had paired up with uh, Walden Media to create an original young adult thriller centered on the ghost of Edgar Allan Poe, which I think that was the Poe project. Um, if you go to Revelations, there is a section, a small section for the Poe project. Uh, it looks like this project goes as far back as 98. Mm. According to Phil and Sarah, they said that back in 1998, Clive devised a series of three pictures for MGM, either adaptations of or scripts based on themes from Edgar Allan Poe's short stories. And then there was going to be a biographical tale of Poe and his editor, uh, which I think was Rufus Griswold, um, entitled Cain's Bone. And there were a few more uh, projects that were floating around, but this Hollywood Reporter 2006 uh, news of the uh, young adult thriller, it was going to be loosely based on Poe's life and his stories, produced with Anthony de Blasi and Joe Daly and their, uh, you know, Midnight Pictures production. Right, thing. yeah. And um, there really weren't a lot of, news about that and it just was one of those projects that fizzled out yeah um but i found some stuff and this is just out of curiosity clive didn't mention this at all in his uh 30 projects that are coming out but the film i found out more stuff about this walden media project that he tried to develop back in 2006 it was about uh, a group of teenagers who would attempt to uncover what happened during the last two weeks of Poe's life. The Hollywood Reporter notes that they inadvertently trigger a curse that unlocks Poe's nightmares from which they must escape. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what it was going to be like. So, huh. very, yeah, that would very be interesting. Cool. Yeah. But it's one of those things, right? I mean, there's all these projects there and you never know when you look at those shelves yeah. what is still being developed or what yeah. is still like a living project and what is a dead project. So I remember one was a big notebook that said down Satan. And I'm like, why, why is that a big notebook? And so I asked Mark Miller, I said, what's this all about? You know, cause they, you can't have a big notebook for a, just an old books of blood short story. And he said, Oh, that was, you know, that was an animated feature film. Like, oh, God, really? wow. Yeah, and yeah. so and there was all you know there. That's just one of like a hundred things that were up there. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that Clive has um, in his office uh, being developed, and yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I would love to see some conclusion to these things. I mean, Clive once said that you know, as a gay man, I don't have kids, and these paintings and books are my kids. So you know, this stuff takes time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's time for him to focus on that. And I think it's time that he feels the release of putting these projects finally out at some point mm -hmm. and, uh, and enjoying the much deserved fruits of his labor, because this is stuff that's been in drawers and boxes and dossiers. And um, I mean, I want to know more about this stuff. I want to see this stuff come out, you know as soon as possible. And I would love to see Clive get back to his form and get back to putting all this stuff out. Even, you know, look at the stuff that Phil and Sarah has been putting out, right? I mean, Dark Worlds was an amazing book. And uh, yeah. the little theater play books that they put out every once in a while, those are also pretty amazing. Yeah. So thanks to Phil and Sarah, hopefully as his archivists and his editors, I mean, this could be a renaissance in uh, some Clive Barker projects. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. Um, I know um, there's been, there's been uh, this, this little, little sort of announcement interview type deal from bloody disgusting has spurned on a lot of speculation and arguments, you know, online um, people, people trying to, to, to guess what's going on with, Clive and his publishers and stuff like that but we we don't you know even even you and I we're not really privy to all of that we we don't know what's going on between Clive and his publishers and you know um what's been happening and why uh behind the scenes and and why things have been taking so long to come out 
We don't know. So we'll just, you know, we're, we're just like, we're fans like everybody else. We just wait and, you know, wait and see and hope, uh, hope for the best. And we try to bring you the most up-to-date news and uh, make sure that everybody can, you know, fall under this nice umbrella of uh, community and, uh, yeah. and get to know all about all these news. Um, and you can check that out in the uh, notes that we have in our episode below the break. Yeah. Yeah. So no, and I thought that that was really, that it's always interesting to dig up those old, um, old projects that almost happened too, like the Poe project. That was a, that was a good one. I had completely, I don't know if I ever remembered about that. So well, 2005 yeah. and 2006 were, was a period in my life where I kind of, I kind of disconnected a little bit from Clyde Barker's stuff when I went through a really bad breakup. And so I guess I totally missed this part because I wasn't really paying that much attention to the stuff that was coming out. And then mm. I got back into it um, back in like 2007, 2008. Um, there, you know, I mean, everybody who's been a Clyde Barker fan for a long time knows that there's been some crossing of the desert periods uh, where we're just waiting for things to come out. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, I totally missed this pro project. I didn't hear about this one at all. Yeah, well, and, and it's one of those, it's one of those, you know, weird ones where you're like, huh, really? You know, or like, um, like what was zombies versus gladiators? You know, that's uh -huh. one of those ones where you, you read the blurb and you go, what? You yeah. Know? Yeah. It looks like it was someone else's idea that they brought to Clive's table and Clive was like, sure. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. it yeah. never goes anywhere. That's why I thought the zombie versus gladiators was. Um there was um, another thing I found out, you know, Dean Drinkle, who, yeah. you know, published uh, Patient K by Barbie Wilde. Um, I found out more stuff digging into the whole Poe project. Um, Dean Drinkle said that back in 2018, when he set up his publishing company, um, he met someone. Uh, he went to a business meeting and... Um, he was contacted by a film producer for a screenplay that he wanted Dean Drinkle to write for him. And the, the story was going to be called Dirty Paws. And it was, an, according to Dean Drinkle, an unofficial sequel to Edgar Allan Poe's The Murders in the Rue Morgue, but perhaps more importantly, Clyde Barker's New Murders in the Rue Morgue, published in 1984. Um, and oh. he said that, uh, yeah, so apparently that, that project didn't go through, but he did end up publishing a short story called Dirty Paws by Dean Drinkle. And I haven't read that yet, but I just found that today while I was looking through O Project stuff on the internet. So it's interesting. I need to read this Dirty Paws. He says it's a homage to Poe and Barker. And oh. um, I'll try to put notes on this um, if you guys want to pursue that little thread. And read yeah. the story. I'll put some notes in the uh, show notes. It's amazing how things kind of spiral out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, and I guess if we're, yeah, the, the next thing is obviously, you know, Patreon. We want to give a shout out to our, our Patreon backers. Um, we're offering a Patreon um, for people who want to support us. We really appreciate it. And um, and if you want to if you want to support us, we have a five dollar membership, five dollar a month membership, and that entitles you to be able to see our um, behind you know our our content that's not available anywhere else on. Uh, uh, we've got an unlisted YouTube channel, and actually we need to put that up. I think we haven't yeah. done that yet. There's a yeah. whole bunch of videos on there, and we need to get that linked up to the Patreon. Um, We're still working page. on getting. If there's a way of getting us to do a team, so I can also go in and and post stuff in the Patreon, so we're, we we yeah. can figure that out. Yeah, I got a lot of ideas for stuff. Yeah, I tried to get I tried to get uh, Jose on on there, and they wouldn't let me do it. Um, so we're still we need to figure that out. Yeah, and um, so so yeah, we need to do that, and then um. But yes, um, and then at the $10 level, 
uh, you, you, there's that. Plus, you can also suggest uh, topics for the for the um, for the podcast, and and maybe even join in an mm-hmm. episode. Um, and and at fifteen dollars a month level, there's advertising. And so we want to do a shout out to our our first ever backers for this Patreon. We've got uh, David Anderson, Eric Van de Holt, and our returning uh, sponsor, Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. Yay. You Love you guys. Thanks for supporting us. At the, at the beginning. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for we supporting we'll us. And make it worth your while. Yeah, and we'll we'll get that. Um, when I'm back from vacation, we'll get that linked up on the Patreon page and get Patreon updated again. And um, coming next, what are we going to do coming next? So um, in the in the somewhat near future, I think in uh, I think we're looking at mid to late April, we're going to be doing Dead Pit commentary. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, with uh, the the head of special effects for Dead Pit, Ed Martinez, who's been on our podcast many times, and Nina will be there. Um, I believe. And then uh, more coverage of the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment. Uh, more news episodes as the news comes along. Uh, maybe and Jericho Squad will come back. And uh, oh, commentary for Evil Dead Two. Yeah, Evil Dead Two is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait and, to do that. Yeah, that'll be fun. That I like that one better than the first Evil Dead. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a, a second try. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, uh, we'll come back to the Boom Hellraiser comics. Awesome. And finish yes. up those that series. Yeah, because um, we just did the we just did that on episode four four two, and uh, yeah. it was a little confusing. And I think it's about to get even more confusing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll so we those. we finished up through issue twenty, which. Finishes up the run of um, that series, but then then they started up like one through four of like the Dark Watch and then the Road Below. So we'll do those, and then and then we'll go into the independently published uh, series. No worries, by Seraphim. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. are you? Uh... You're in Seward right now, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I'm in Seward. I'm at this. Uh, we came here to visit the Sea Life Center, and it's Joel's spring break. So we came here to visit nice. the Sea Life Center, and we're taking a, a wildlife glacier cruise tomorrow. We're going to visit an octopus today. That sounds really nice. Um, yeah. Is it, uh, is, are the days there becoming uh, longer now? Uh yeah yeah well and and this is farther south than Fairbanks so it's a little oh, okay. warmer and gotcha. not as not as dark as it is in Fairbanks yeah yeah and actually gotcha. you can see the sun's already come up oh that's nice since since we started and in Fairbanks is uh are you getting full days now instead of like the sun coming up for a little bit and going back down yeah okay yeah because the solstice was the twenty first of December so it, that's right yeah it's been Three months since then, so we nice. it's seven seven minutes of daylight every day since the solstice. Well, you're on vacation in Alaska. I'm on my day off today, so yeah. I'm going to be looking into more stuff. Um, I've been scanning stuff for posting on Patreon, so I've got a bunch oh, of yeah. things and uh, that I would love to start blogging and giving more uh, behind the scenes stuff. And so that would be interesting. Let's work on that Patreon stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Because I think that would be a great way of uh, providing more content through uh, Patreon for people who really want to know more about how the sausage is made. Yeah. Yeah, there was something about Patreon needing you to have a certain number of followers before you could have a team. That was mm-hmm. kind of irritating. So they wouldn't okay. let us have a team. And I couldn't share the login because it's using my my uh, Apple ID for my login. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of a. I might start sending you some stuff, and you can start making the initial um, the yeah. initial updates uh, by email. 
And I might right. just call into their customer service and see if there's a way that we can that we can get them to help us with this sure. issue. Yeah. So more books have been arriving uh, to some of our backers, like Paul Odino yeah. got your book. Let us know what you think about it. I'll and by the book, for people who don't know, we're talking about the one that's behind Jose's back there on the, the Barker Cast interviews, Occupy right. Midian. Yep. Uh, it's available on Amazon in hardcover and Kindle and also on Apple Books in ebook form. That's right. And um yeah, and don't forget that we do have a t-shirt store as well. Uh, usually the link is in our website, and you can go there and mm -hmm. check out our gear for, you know, I think we should retire a few designs. Maybe it's time to bring new designs into the mix. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we should retire the first design and maybe the duels of blood because we haven't done that in a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, we could do uh, that. Yeah. Although those are, those are, um, I don't know, maybe people people will like those because they're like the, the classic designs. Yeah, I guess, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, maybe, maybe we'll uh, launch a t-shirt through Patreon um, first and then make it available afterwards. Um, there's yeah. a lot of stuff we could do with Patreon now. So I'm looking forward to creating more stuff with you and uh, getting yeah. that to more people out there. That'll be fun. All right. Well, in this podcast, having no beginning, we'll have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc., this is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The BarkerCast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff, pick an episode topic, and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Opening music by Ray Norrish. End credit music by Matt Furness. Thanks for listening.